Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. Thanks for joining us for Tesla Time News Bite Sized. Sponsored by our friends at the solar powered hotels in Schaumburg, Illinois, the Fairfield Inn and Suites by Marriott, and the Town Place Suites Hotel right next door. They're both connected and they're both solar powered. All right, let's get into it. According to CNBC, Tesla has acquired the company DeepScale, which is a California Bay Area startup focused on deep neural networks. So is this like some kind of big company that's been working on neural networks like since the 70s or something like that? No, it's a new startup and they recently raised $15 million in Series A financing, which basically means they're a brand new company and uh, one of their first big chunks of money came in, which makes them probably a 50 to $75 million company. Hard to really know exactly when a company is that small. Mm. Um, we think they have about 40 employees. And CEO Forrest Iandola confirmed that he joined Tesla as a senior staff machine learning scientist. He said, I joined the Tesla autopilot team this week. I'm looking forward to working with some of the brightest minds in deep learning and autonomous driving. So why did Tesla acquire such a tiny little company? I mean, 50, even $100 million company is is, you know, pretty small fry when it comes to Tesla. Um, why did they buy them? Right now, Tesla has too much of one thing. Uh, money? No, the, and no, no company can have too much money. Okay, uh, except Apple. Um, <laughs> uh, w- uh, w- uh, w- um, like balloons? Data. They've got so much data that uh, it's almost too much data, right? You've got all this data coming in from the cars and you have to be able to process it Mm -hmm. properly. Well, DeepScale is known for having built a computer vision AI software for vehicles called Carver 21. And so they have come up with a way to take all that data and filter out what you need to train your neural network. If you have so much data that you're just throwing it out, it's useless, right? And that's why they needed to come up with a way to figure out what data they need and what data they don't. And they could have built the team themselves from scratch, but why not just acquire a company that's already got the talent and already works well together? We actually watched a video of some of the people from Deep Scale talking about what they were working on, and they really, really sounded like they knew what they were talking about. Um, and they really went about it in a very interesting way. Again, the smart thing that Tesla did here is that they are acquiring the whole team. So you have someone who's already built a team, and you just say, all of you guys, get on board. You right. don't have to, because I mean, like, how would Ford do this? I guess they would uh, be like, you know what? Let's fly the best and the brightest out to Michigan (laughs) and uh, put them up in the Hyatt Regency. And uh, let's have a little sit down with the chicken dinner and find out what these guys can do. That would require that the Ford guys like knew what these guys are saying. Because I mean, I was watching the video and I'm I'm pretty smart. And a lot of what this guy was saying was just like, (laughs) you know, like, it's some serious like AI talk. You need to really know what you're talking about when you're going into these kinds of meetings. If tomorrow I gave you a hundred million dollars and I was like, I want you to go make me the best deep neural net, you know, division of people you can find. What are you gonna do? I mean, like that's that's tough. I guess you'd go to Silicon Valley and you'd just start talking to people. Craigslist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, I need someone who knows how to use uh, deep neural nets. I, I think it's super, super valuable that Tesla is, on, you know, has their finger on the pulse. They have a whole division that's already making an autopilot that's working in the real world, pretty much everywhere in the world. And they can just be like, oh, pfft, yeah, these guys know what they're talking about. Get them all on board. So not only did they acquire deep scale, they also acquired high bar systems. According to Electric Autonomy Canada, Tesla has acquired the Ontario-based company Highbar Systems Limited, a company that specializes in battery manufacturing. Now, the acquisition took place between July and October, and the reason why we don't know when is because in July when they filed in Canada, Tesla said they didn't own this company. Mm. But when they just filed again on October 2nd, they said they did. So it had to have happened sometime in between. Over 50% of Highbar's business is in the Chinese market. And in addition to having facilities in North America, Highbar also holds major manufacturing facilities in Europe, South Korea, Japan, Malaysia, and China. Highbar's website has gone dark, but according to an archived version of Highbar's website, among Highbar's latest technology offerings are its advanced 
automated vacuum filling systems for lithium-ion battery applications for use in hybrid electric vehicles, computer notebooks, and similar products. Highbar provides complete design, engineering, and manufacturing automation expertise, including special equipment design and development in an integrated offering. Now, according to LinkedIn, there are 79 employees. So Tesla has bought Maxwell Technologies for new battery tech. They've now purchased DeepScale, and now they're purchasing high bar systems for their battery manufacturing. And this kind of fits in with their battery skunk works that we've heard about at Cato Road in Fremont, California. So this company basically makes pumps that pump small amounts of liquid like if you want to pump in an uh, electrolyte into a small battery mm -hmm. or a small cosmetics. Um, one of the things they offer to battery companies is they'll just make the machines you need to make batteries. Right. So this is another great company to acquire. These are people who've been in business for a very long time. So, you know, much different than deep scale. But you kind of need that when we're talking about battery manufacturing. Like you don't want like a, a new startup for battery manufacturing. You want a new startup for like software. Right. And so it seems like with their expertise and Tesla's, you know, expansive uh, battery needs, this is another great fit. It's just so cool that Tesla is acquiring all of these really smart sounding companies. Tesla's whole business dynamic is to be vertically integrated so that they are not relying on outside sources to build some of their most important components. So now they're gonna be building the batteries probably in-house soon, which is super exciting. So last week we reported the leaked Elon email to employees stating that Tesla would have record deliveries in Q3. And it looks like they pulled it off. 97,000 vehicles in a quarter, in a quarter. Yeah, they used to only do this in a year. In 2017, they delivered 100,000 cars. Now, in Q3 of 2019, they deliver the same number. Yeah, I mean, look at this chart here from Hypercharts, and you can see that it's a record-breaking quarter. So let's put this in some kind of perspective here. Let's just look at US car sales. This chart here shows the best-selling cars in the third quarter of 2019. Uh, and see the little red line there? Yeah. That's the Tesla Model 3. Wow, I mean, because we're talking about, you know, the Camry, the Corolla, uh, the the Civic, the all the cars that are out ahead of it are the most popular cars. Like, if you look, just peek, Peek out onto the road right now. What are you going to see out on the road? High chances are you're going to see a Civic or a Corolla. Um, but now Model 3 is basically inching into the top spaces. And as Tesla said, as was also the case in Q2, nearly all of our Model 3 orders were received from customers who did not previously hold a reservation. In addition, we achieved record net orders in Q3 and are entering Q4 with an increase in our order backlog. So Elon had talked about having possibly 110,000 sold. They didn't quite pull that off, but that means that those extras that didn't sell in this quarter are probably gonna be in next quarter. Hang on a second. What's the matter? Elon said though, that there were gonna be 110,000 deliveries and there were only 97,000. So, well, gee, huh? That's why the stock dropped 5% when, when this came out. But that's the way that all analysts work on Wall Street, right? You, you set a number, and if you don't meet it exactly, there seems to be problems with the stock price. And Elon didn't even set this number. This right. was a leaked email to employees where he was like, come on, guys, we could hit 110,000 if we really try. Um, obviously, you know, setting a high goal for his employees, so that way hopefully they will you know, maybe come close to it, making a record quarter or something like that, but not necessarily going out to the world and being like, hello everyone, we're gonna have 110,000 deliveries this quarter, right? He didn't say that, that was an email to employees. Right. And yet all the analysts went, oh, 110,000, cause that's what Elon said. Well, remember that a lot of analysts thought that they were gonna be delivering something like 60,000 cars this quarter. Right, which is bananas. I can't believe that analysts really thought that the number of deliveries was going to drop this quarter. They thought that basically Tesla had worked through all of their demand, that there was nobody left because they were just focusing on the people on the reservation list. Right. And as we've seen here, most of the people buying these cars were never on the reservation list. Right, so let's just talk about this for a second because this was the biggest thing. The Tesla shorts would come and they would roll this out and they would say, see? We know that this isn't gonna happen because look at this. The only people who ever wanted to buy a Model 3 on the entire planet 
put down their reservations on the first day of the Model 3's unveiling, and those were the only people who were ever going to buy a Tesla Model 3. And here's the thing. Right. I want to know how many analysts actually have driven in a Model 3, because I bet you that number is very, very low. If those analysts drove in a Model 3, they would realize what other people realize, which is as soon as they get in their friend's Model 3, they're like, oh my gosh, where can I get right. one of these? Why am I not driving in this? This thing is a spaceship. Right. Um, and yeah, look at the growth here, right? It's growth. You're basically seeing growth, huge growth in, in Model 3 sales from... From the moment they got into production. Exactly. You know, we saw this weird drop off in Q1, um, which was basically because they started shipping them across the ocean and a lot of cars were in the ships, not delivered to customers that quarter. Um, and that's why we saw that dip. And remember how the shorts went bananas. They were like, see, there's no more demand. And you're never going to sell another Tesla ever again. Were those drunk analysts? <laughs> I don't know. They Like, this is the thing. Like, I just, I'm looking at the data here and it's growth. Basically, this, you know, lack of demand thesis is completely out the window at this point because this is another record quarter for Tesla showing that there is no lack of demand. So did you see this video, Jess? Yeah, this jerk just keyed this guy's Model 3. He was at his kid's soccer game. Yeah, and this person just keyed his car and thought that she was gonna get away with it. Well, guess what? What? The video went viral and she turned herself in. Broomfield police said, we received hundreds of tips on the video of the woman caught keying a Tesla over the weekend. We identified the suspect, 57-year-old Maria Elena Gimeno, earlier this week. Last night, she turned herself in and was booked at the Broomfield Detention Center on the charge of criminal mischief, a class six felony. We appreciate the community's help solving this case. So she was charged with a class six criminal mischief felony in Colorado, and that means she faces up to one and a half years in prison and fines of up to $5,000. Oh, and this is the second time a Tesla vandal has turned themselves in after footage went viral. Right, so this, is, this kind of proves that Tesla Sentry Mode works, okay? Because not only are we, are we catching people, because we are catching people using Tesla Sentry Mode, but they are actually turning themselves in because basically they know they're going to get caught because when you get your face, plastered all over the internet, keying someone's car, no one is, like, there aren't very many people out there that are going to be like, oh, but they were just keying his car. Yeah. Every, nobody likes this, you know? So it's really nice that we can actually have some justice in this world. Um, it's it's sad that we need to resort to, to cameras and stuff like that, but if it works, it works. Thank you for joining us on Bite Sized. You missed a lot of stories. We've got them all on Tesla Time News, the full version that comes out every Monday. So go check that out down below.